Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Digital Plus Summit online session. Today, we have Douglas Song, Head of Strategy and Consulting at IT Consultus. He will be talking to you guys today about data-driven retail in the social e-commerce era with marketing automation and e -com. So I'm just going to leave the floor to Douglas. Please do take it away. Thanks a lot. Thank you for your warm introduction. All right. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. So uh, allow me to introduce a little bit about ITC and also myself. So let's uh, start. So today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the, the the idea of social commerce um, with um, the solutions in China related to marketing automation, uh, WeCom, WeChat work. Uh, before then, uh, just allow me to introduce a bit about ITC, IT Consultants. So we are a a digital transformation agency that's based in Shanghai. We've been in the business for a little bit more than 12 years, uh, served uh, over 600 clients based in, as you can see, um, in Shanghai, but also extends our reach to the other APAC region, including Vietnam and Singapore. Now, our mission is very simple. Uh, it's basically helping our clients reimagine their uh, digital future together. Now, uh, the journey of ITC actually started from a very simple vision, uh, is to, number one, uh, help international brands uh, connect with uh, uh, Chinese consumers. And number two is really to breach the gap between uh, um, the business challenges with tech-driven solutions that address them. So within ITC, as you can see, we have been helping a lot of, uh, we're fortunate enough to help a lot of industry leaders of uh, various industry. And also we are uh, official partner with Tencent as well, helping them to train the different end user of the solutions such as Wecom, uh, including the sales associates, store managers, uh, as well as uh, CRM managers, uh, and so on. So today we're going to start, at, and also my name, my name is Douglas. I'm heading currently the uh, uh, Department of Strategy and Consulting at ITC. So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a little bit about China, uh, China's digital ecosystem as the uh, context. Uh, and as the backdrop of today's presentation, and what are we talking about when we're talking about social commerce um, in China's today's landscape? And second, a little bit about omnichannel. Now, this topic might be a little bit more uh, uh, multifaceted and, and, and complex. Uh, however, we'll try to uh, uh, um, uh, take everybody through um, the, the the notion and also the, the different strategies that uh, in China, how different brands are leveraging uh, the touch points to enhance their omnichannel retailing. And uh, we're also going to talk about the technologies involved, as well as some case studies to help us better understand uh, the rationale behind it. So to start with, China as a uh, economy is actually resolutely digital. So with over 1 billion netizens, actually now it should be like 1.2, 1.3 billion netizens who are spending over seven hours per day on average on their mobile devices. Uh, as a result, as you can see, China, number one, most of the uh, uh, experience uh, primarily mobile. And number two is that China is actually leading uh, the retail e-commerce globally, uh, actually by a long shot. So over half of the retail spending are contributed by China and within China, uh, more than five, uh, more than 50% of, of the spending actually happening online. And as you can see, 80% of those uh, users are routine uh, users of mobile payments. Uh, and another thing is that in China, the QR code and also social commerce is quite prevalent. Um, that being said, the Chinese consumers have developed this remarkably strong affinity towards social commerce. And in China, um, as you can see, social and live commerce accounted for more than 30% of total e-commerce, uh, uh, GMB in 2020, uh, where half of the time spent on mobile is re re related to the uh, social applications. Uh, China is also very strong in terms of the QR code. QR code is actually an integral part of uh, Chinese consumers' daily life. Uh, we scan QR code to do check-in. Um, there is also like different order. Uh, order we order the food via the QR code. You pay bills um, and uh, book different lessons via QR code. And uh, even the bagglers on the streets uh, these days are uh, providing the option of of, of scanning QR code. Uh, uh, for, for giving the money, right? Um, and beside, we also have um, the different touch points in China that, that would be quite unique um, um, to, to, to its landscape and it's relevant uh, to today's topic uh, of, of omni-channel, but also like um, the idea of social commerce. So in China, uh, uh, first of all, let's talk a little bit about social commerce uh, before we start introducing the different touch points. Um, it's either um, a, a social media platform. Uh, social, social commerce is either a social media platform that is 
quite e-commerce driven, or uh, you can regard that as an e-commerce platform where social media uh, is actually the main driver uh, of, 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 of sales. And as, as we just mentioned, uh, the reason why Chinese uh, consumers uh, are, are quite, uh, uh, in terms of the, the, the affinity towards the social commerce, uh, or uh, it, it's in, in fact, uh, the, the evolution of, it's re related to the evolution of China's digital uh, landscape. So uh, we all know that there's the super app, uh, such as WeChat, um, where essentially blur the line between uh, uh, social media and e-commerce. Um, that said, social commerce should not be viewed uh, in China, I guess, as just an, an element of uh, wider digital commerce, but it's actually the core of how uh, the different Chinese consumers want to transact online. And generally, um, there are, are a couple of scenarios or channels where <clears throat> daily Chinese consumer would encounter social commerce. So first of all, you would have the um, the e-commerce the e platform, the e-commerce giant, such as uh, uh, Tmall and Taobao and JD. So you have noticed that actually Tmall and JD have shifted their uh, user interface to a more uh, Instagram style platform that essentially facilitate uh, social content and uh, social interaction. So it's really about making the experience more uh, connected and social. So talking about what we buy um, and, and sharing our thoughts about the different products. And next up, we have uh, the video and live stream apps, right? So here we're talking about the first funnel that you see here. So the video, video hosting uh, applications, um, the, the live streaming uh, apps, uh, I'm sure you heard of, um, uh, you know, Douyin, which is the Chinese sibling uh, of, of, of TikTok. Uh, but if you have a chance to download Douyin and try it, you will notice that it's very different from, uh, from, from TikTok, which is far more e-commerce driven. Now, um, and to, to actually stress the, 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 the Douyin uh, as, uh, in terms of overall like market spend and traditional uh, some, uh, digital channels uh, such as search engine and e-commerce actually uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the new battleground for a lot of brands. So it's really about where the action is. And right now it's, it's definitely in shorts, uh, short videos and live streaming. Uh, of course, we also have uh, no, number three, uh, third scenario. We also have some really niche and vertical uh, a commerce platform, uh, commerce players. Now, these trend isn't just a you know limited to big names. We also have um, uh, like a clothing uh, or sneaker focused platform such as the Wu uh, Du, and there is also a discount platform like Pinduoduo. Uh, they're also getting on the action of social commerce, feature marketing, social uh, uh, um, uh, commerce. It's it's very prevalent in those channels where from high end fashion to bargain buys, as you can see, social commerce is everywhere. Now, if you have noticed that these are the, I guess they're all uh, part of expensive platforms, right? Platform traffic, platform uh, uh, where you invest, brands would invest in traffic to enhance uh, visibility and volume. And this is what we call a uh, platform traffic or public traffic. And there's a, there's a, I guess, uh, if you look at this, uh, brands are, are investing in, in exchange of volume, but there are problems associated with public traffic because as those platform uh, grow more mature and saturated, we also face different challenges. For example, the customer acquisition costs are uh, often higher and uh, branding also becomes somewhat restricted due to the platform's limitation regulations and uh, making it not always the, the, the best channel for uh, creating a unique and personalized shopping experience. And, 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 and most importantly, the data uh, oftentimes is not fully controlled and owned by the brand, uh, but it's owned by the, uh, the platforms. So what does this lead us? Uh, now, uh, if I can bring your attention to uh, the, the button funnels here uh, is, uh, uh, is essentially the last scenario where uh, our consumers encounter social commerce. That is the retail stores on the right-hand side, the offline store, the, the brick and mortar stores, and the brand owned WeChat touch points, WeChat as an ecosystem. Now that includes WeChat official account, WeCom, WeChat mini programs, different uh, community groups. Um, also uh, there's WeChat channel, uh, the video uh, platform as well. Now these specific uh, ecosystem, as you can see, WeChat uh, as an ecosystem allows brands to host direct to consumer content. And also this approach would give back control to the brands, feeding it into a, uh, sort of an omni-channel customer engagement strategy, which allows a more tailored experience uh, that's crafted for the individual shopper. So while, as you can see, the, the broader platform offer extensive reach, 
um, the brands that can really be successful are the ones that can balance uh, the reach with uh, relevance. And um, if you look at WeChat as an ecosystem, uh, it is really uh, uh, where brands, uh, when, when connected with offline stores, it is the, 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 the battleground where, where brands can truly interact more directly and more personally with their customers. Uh, but more importantly, having full control of the data. Now, as you can see, uh, some of the key players, um, you have WeChat, there's also Douyin, Xiaohongshu, um, but social commerce is essentially the new normal right now in China. And for daily consumers, um, their shopping, their, their experience, uh, their journeys are often uh, fragmented. And we're, we're talking about, uh, I guess, the most digital savvy uh, uh, millennials, uh, the shoppers uh, of the world, where before making a purchase, they actually would compare uh, products between multiple touch points, including public traffic and private traffic. So Timo and JD, also your uh, uh, um, social media platforms. And when they convert, uh, there's also like uh, WeChat mini program, WeCon, which we're going to uh, explain a little bit later, uh, that it's going to enhance both the online and offline experience. So it has become really important for brands to own, to control and, and fully utilize uh, the customer data uh, to harness the, the potential of private traffic. Uh, for following reasons, number one is that this really helps brands to uh, build trust over time. Um, and along the way, brand can essentially enhance the different uh, elements uh, such as brand awareness and, um, and, and, and build a more holistic uh, customer profile, uh, but also restrict, uh, reduce the friction uh, for customer experience. So basically um, when um, comparing to customer, when they need to actually make a purchase and there's like multiple uh, uh, touch points that they need to interact, uh, when customer is within that single ecosystem, such as your WeChat uh, ecosystem, uh, the, the conversion becomes much more uh, simple. And lastly, we can keep our customer engaged with our private traffic uh, to lift engagement and also activeness level by providing a more personalized and, and segmented content uh, uh, experience as well. Um, before we dive into the next part about omnichannel, I also like to explain a little bit about like, within the social commerce, the reason why WeChat is um, uh, the key player um, uh, as we address WeChat as an ecosystem. Uh, number one, um, it has a lot of, um, uh, uh, not just uh, WeChat official account, not just uh, WeChat channel. There is from the point of awareness to the point of conversion, there are actually multiple uh, touch points uh, for brands uh, to, to leverage, uh, to, to enhance that. Uh, uh, various uh, possibilities of, of, of customer engagement. And um, you can also nurture participants uh, and, and, and participation of events and, and loyalty uh, throughout the, the customer journey. There's also, as you can see, um, uh, the different uh, cases that how brand would leverage WeChat. For example, they can use WeChat official account as the main uh, brand hub. Uh, they offer different, you know, uh, content, um, different uh, uh, call to actions uh, for your followers, uh, subscribers. Uh, there's also e-commerce mini program that's built within WeChat where uh, customers can click and, and make a purchase right away. There's also channel, which is uh, short video platforms uh, uh, offered, uh, uh, provided by Tencent uh, that's embedded within WeChat ecosystem where friends can share the different videos and brands can also share their content uh, uh, on, 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 on this platform. Um, so beside that, WeChat is also playing a very different role, connecting billions and billions of people. Um, we have uh, WeChat Search. Uh, there's also WeChat uh, um, uh, Live Streaming, uh, WeChat Payment, um, and also uh, what I just mentioned, uh, WeChat WeCom, WeChat Work, and also uh, uh, Channel, right? So as we dive a little bit deeper into omni-channel uh, retailing, um, we understand uh, now social commerce is the major driving force, I guess, uh, to shape the retail landscape. Uh, Omnichannel is a little bit more complica uh, complicated. Uh, I guess it's an interconnected concept. Um, but what does it really mean uh, in China's context? Uh, I guess it really goes beyond the global understanding since it's, it's, it's multifactored and, and with different components that reflect the unique dynamics of the Chinese market. But um, perhaps to understand Omnichannel, we first need to understand how uh, uh, Chinese consumers would um, would would hop between online and offline before they make a purchase. So as you can see, COVID nineteen definitely has accelerated the process of shifting online. Uh, so even now, a lot of uh, consumers expect to visit the brand's WeChat official account or in engage with 
uh, certain touch points before we visit an offline store. And um, more than uh, 60%, 69 percent of, of the consumers would actually interact with brand both online and offline. And if you look at the overall consumer journey uh, of today's retail world, uh, whether it's awareness, uh, interest, consideration, conversion, advocacies, um, consumers would actually compare the different uh, um, uh, touch points I just mentioned, and um, the experience would reflect um, brand um, uh, omnipresence, right? And also the data, um, you would also face the challenge where um, customers' data within the e-commerce platform might not be visible, whereas in the WeChat platform uh, um, uh, and also Xiaohongshu and, and, and Douyin, uh, there's also uh, an urge for uh, brands to uh, construct a more cu customer-centric approach uh, to uh, to enhance that overall uh, social commerce experience. But to understand um, um, omni-channel in China, I guess it's uh, we can uh, we can simply uh, do a bit of comparison between China and the West uh, to set the context. Right. So first of all, uh, there is um, when it comes to omni-channel, we have omni-channel. Decision making. So the approach is really related to customer behavior and and and, and trust usage in China, where Chinese consumers are known for uh, it, it's you know they're really digital savvy uh, before buying, uh, especially this generation. So the uh, they would actually hop between the different online and offline touch points and 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 require the different uh, um, uh, the different I guess verifications. They actually assess different product informations and pricings. Uh, in fact, more than you know seventy percent of the Chinese uh, shoppers would actually cross-check the different uh, uh, products before making a purchase. Uh, and also you'll have omni-channel um, like social media. Uh, so omni-channel consumer engagement. So social media is playing a, a super important role uh, in, this, in, this, in this aspect. Um, as mentioned, consumers would actually engage with brands through platforms such as WeChat uh, uh, before uh, going to a physical store. Uh, and uh, uh, this is really, um, and I guess an example also paved the way uh, for store-centric omni-channel engagements, right? Whereas in the West, social media is, is um, mainly used for marketing and engagements and, and might not have the same level of integration uh, within the retail experience as WeChat has in China. So for example, in China, all most of all the WeChat media programs would have a store locator function where when uh, when the send, like when the consumer is going overseas um, to purchase SEM brand, uh, when they're you know, opening the, the WeChat um, a mini program, they would expect a very similar experience. And third, we have also the omnichannel fulfillment, right? This is where like the, the OTO experience uh, and, 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 uh, and other uh, online to offline strategies uh, 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 that we discuss um, uh, would be really important. So it's really not just about like purchasing online and offline, uh, it, it is more like a blend of both. So you wanna you wanna try uh, you know clothes at home even before purchasing. Some brands would offer that experience. So it's really about offering multiple options that would be able to bridge the gap between online convenience and uh, in-store experience. And lastly, we have the CRM and, and data uh, related. So the omni-channel CRM. So in China, uh, and 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 and. I guess CRM, it's, uh, it's very, very important, uh, absolutely. But then if you think about a lot of brands that actually started their CRM strategy using WeChat as the main hub, as a result, most of the CRM solutions in China are comprehensively integrated with WeChat as an ecosystem. So a lot of times um, when brands need to uh, uh, engage or, or set up their life cycle uh, campaigns uh, uh, with, uh, with, with the different consumers, uh, WeChat becomes the main um, battleground. And also that unified membership across different platforms is quite different in China versus the West, right? Um, and, and to, uh, I guess, to add upon this, uh, there's also like, I guess, that retail innovation in terms of OTO doesn't just stop there. Uh, so you also in, in um, in a lot of different sectors, uh, there is also the emphasis on in-store digitalization, right? So um, uh, that's sometimes we call this a, a digital experience. So uh, there's also immersive like 3D shopping experience on Tmall. Um, so the boundary between the physical and digital online offline is, is growing more and more blurry. Um, omnichannel. Uh, I guess to recap, omnichannel in China is not just a buzzword. Uh, I guess it's, it's, it's also an adaptive strategy to reflect consumer behaviors, right? Technolo technological advancements and, and market dynamics. 
Um, it's really about meeting customers where they are, uh, whether it's in store, online, or uh, offline, or somewhere in between. So it's uh, as 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 we look at China's, um, I guess, uh, OTO strategy. Um, uh, I guess the fusion of online and offline retail may very well set the tone for for the global market in the future. Now, um, as we explore. Uh, the multifaceted world of omnichannel retailing in China, uh, in view of the time, uh, we, we're going to dig uh, a little bit deeper into the, the technologies and also case studies um, uh, in the next, uh, I guess, 20 minutes. So what are the technologies um, that those brands are pulling this off, right? What is the engine between all the solutions behind this seamless integration? So uh, we're going to look at three main um, solutions. Uh, I think number one is we have uh, mini programs. Uh, we have uh, Reclum and also the marketing automation engine or social CRM in China. So uh, before I, I, I jump in, so uh, I guess a really quick introduction about like mini program. Um, it's essentially, a, a, if you imagine a website and application uh, combination that is within WeChat. That's a mini program slide. You don't have to download it. It's easy uh, to use. Uh, WeCom is a business communication and, and collaboration tool. Uh, and it's also helping brands to connect with consumers acting as a clienteling solution in China. And there's also marketing automation, which we'll explain shortly. So in the West, you have different apps. You download different apps. For example, um, you would if, if you need to uh, for, com for commute, it's might, it might be Uber uh, for you know delivery and everything. It might be different app uh, for social media is, is different app and for a specific purpose there, there are different apps right. But in China, uh, we basically redefine applications with mini program within WeChat. Uh, which uh, could be explained. And number one, it's integrated with WeChat. So it's um, uh, it's essentially you can operate those um, uh, uh, mini programs within a larger applications such as WeChat. Of course, Alipay has mini programs as well. We're just taking WeChat as an example, right? So it provides different services without uh, requiring a separate downloads. Uh, you can just search the mini program and you can directly use it. Uh, of course, this is technology you would need to uh, develop, um, but it's it's really versatile and convenient, and also. Um, in, uh, different with you know uh, the e-commerce platform, you can actually tailor the experience for your consumers, uh, whether it's you know uh, uh, um, uh, the, the the user journey or specific you know system uh, that you want to integrate the mini program. Uh, um, uh, we have the, we have the options. So brands actually are using mini program for different purposes. You have um, mini programs that are used for campaign driven experience. There is, you know, community uh, um, uh, related mini programs. Uh, there is e-commerce mini programs uh, for conversion, uh, for loyalty, for gamification, um, and, and you name it. So it is um, essentially helping brands uh, to, to, to tailor the experience within the WeChat ecosystem. And also it's connected with the, all the touch points that I just mentioned, such as WeChat official accounts, uh, WeCom and channel, uh, and, and, and essentially bringing our customer from the point of awareness and interest uh, to the point of conversion. It can all happen within a mini program. So we would say mini program is essentially the key uh, digital enabler of, uh, of the, the transforma digital transformation uh, in, 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 in private traffic. Uh, then there is also WeCom. Now, WeCom has gone through some changes over the past couple of years. It started as a as an office application such as like Teams, Slack uh, in China. Um, but as Tencent is um, uh, as, uh, increasingly integrate more and more WeChat uh, functions with WeCom, uh, it has becoming a more and more important um, clienteling solution that helps brands to extend their CRM uh, and, and, and uh, essentially uh, maximizing the engagement between their sales associate in store. Uh, for B2B, it will be sales. For, for retail industry, it will be sales associate um, with uh, the customers, right? So personal WeChat is really for chatting with uh, friends and families. You have account created by individuals, whereas the professional uh, version of uh, WeChat, which is WeCom, uh, the end user of WeCom be your sales associate uh, and account is created by the company. And more importantly, when the sales associate actually leave the company, the data stays, right? So that's WeCom. And WeCom is also uh, an ultimate connector uh, within the WeChat ecosystem. So uh, it is connecting not only uh, the customer and the brand, but also connecting all the different touch points that you see within uh, WeChat, including live streaming, channel, mini programs, um, WeChat Pay, WeChat official account, search, and so on. 
Um, and it's worth mentioning that WeCom also act as, um, actually it's the biggest reason why WeCom is being discussed as the most important like, clienteling solution right now in China is that uh, it has a task management system where a brand can uh, control uh, 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 and manage uh, the different um, uh, uh, tasks and data, um, essentially assign the tasks to different sales associates and and sales associates need to push messages to the customers as required, and brands would have the different uh, different levels of control, but more importantly, the visibility uh, to to ensure the execution of the task uh, is, is successful. Right. So there's that top down management, but also uh, brands can can ensure that the customers are being nurtured uh, continuously. Uh, we also have marketing automation solution uh, in China. That is, as mentioned a little bit earlier, because um, the CRM solution is is uh, 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 a lot of brands are using uh, WeChat as the, uh, the the starting point for CRM engagement. So, um, as as a result, a lot of uh, CRM solution um, it's uh, number one integrated WeChat and number two has developed this marketing marketing automation engine uh, um, within WeChat, where instead of sending SMS and email, which doesn't work. Uh, in China, um, brands would be able to send, for example, push um, WeChat broadcast message to customers based on specific trigger condition. And there are different solutions that, that provide the service. So the marketing aut automation solutions in China or social CRM in China would enable the brands to actually track um, the information uh, or, or data of the, uh, of the customers uh, uh, across the different touch points within WeChat, such as uh, WeChat official account, mini program, WeCon, and so on. And um, to integrate the, the information such as the, the profile data, profiling data, transactional data, behavior data, uh, and, and uh, also provide uh, their followers and subscribers with more, uh, 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 I guess, personalized and tailored um, um, content, right? So with that being said, uh, once those um, solutions are being leveraged, uh, brands then is able to uh, enhance their uh, synergy uh, and create this closed loop engagement. So where customer essentially uh, uh, use different campaign management, follower management system, uh, and and, and um, reach our customer in the different touch points through the different uh, social media channels, and um, and then the data also will be leveraged by brands uh, to create more uh, you know segmented uh, push uh, and, and personalized experience. And uh, with um, the different, um, I guess, channel, uh, you also there's uh, there's uh, a possibility of, uh, of course, integrating all customers' profile data into a one ID. So in, within WeChat, there is the union ID, which is the unique identifier of a user across different touch points, meaning that um, um, all the different information uh, that you are able to collect from different. Uh, a touch points uh, could be merged here to create this omni user ID. And then later on, you can also engage with uh, this customer uh, uh, upon the platforms that's of their preference, whether it's through email, whether it's through mobile, of course, uh, under the premise, you have the data uh, of, of that specific channel. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at some of the case studies. For example, uh, Somos Kino. Somos Kino is one of our clients where we help them to engineer the overall strategy from uh, social CRM. Uh, if you if you know about Moschino, it's Italian fashion brand. Um, so basically, when they um, when we start working on, on the different initiatives of China, uh, what they require is really a holistic uh, strategy related to both like WeChat, uh, WeCom, and Omnichannel. And it was actually in the midst of COVID-19. At the time, Shanghai and other cities is under strict lockdown. So the retail, as you can imagine, was bleeding. Um, and they desperately need a solution that can help them to energize the retail market, but also uh, maximize the interaction between the sales associate and uh, uh, the end consumers. So uh, they also um, asked, you know, in terms of the, the data acquisition and lead management, uh, and, and how do they actually do a more efficient client telling uh, using the different solutions that WeChat uh, provides. So we help them to build this overall social CRM marketing automation uh, um, initiative enhanced with WeCom client telling. So helping them to train over uh, 20 stores, uh, sales associate, uh, and leverage the loyalty program, which is uh, in, in WeChat meeting program to enhance their omni-channel uh, loyalty. Now the marketing uh, automation initiative is also uh, um, uh, 
actually used in uh, in in this in this case uh, where we help them to uh, build uh, the different engagement plan in WeChat. Now WeChat, there are we have uh, you know different uh, persona. For example, followers. You have first time followers. You have perhaps re-followers. You have followers that's been hibernating for the past couple of months. Uh, in, in, in order to detect uh, the different behavior points and profiling points of those customers, we set up um, the different social CRM strategies for uh, Moschino to ensure uh, a full capture of those data. And also there is a content window uh, that, that helped them essentially like a landing page to display the different contents uh, uh, for Moschino. And with Wecom, uh, more importantly, as you can see, um, we help them to develop the different clienteling SOP. Uh, it's worth mentioning that oftentimes when brands are implementing WeCom, there is an issue with, you know, that's the gap we're talking about between the business challenge and, and the solution, because sometimes you would have this technical solution. For example, it's a social CRM, for example, it's WeCom. But brands sometimes often find it challenging to implement this solution to the bottom level, such as a sales associate. How do we ensure WeCom is maximized? So what we did is to uh, make sure that all the stores are being properly trained with WeCom. So that includes like uh, the, 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 the store managers or the sales associate. And we also did a secret shopping afterwards, you know, the, the implementation to go to the stores and test. We would give um, the different uh, brands, for, for example, Moschino, a very specific scenario. You know, I'm, I'm here just to looking for a gift for, for example, my girlfriend. And uh, I, I'm running a bit of time now. Can I add you on WeCom? And then we'll be able to see, you know, what sort of tags they're doing, what sort of tagging, uh, what sort of uh, data they would they would put in, and whether it's according to the SOP that we suggested. So that really ensured a successful and smooth implementation of uh, rollout of WeCom, and we can also help them uh, uh, to uh, to enable the remote selling. Uh, so it really helped during the time of uh, of, of COVID. Um, uh, so with WeCom Pay, uh, the money doesn't actually go through. Uh, this also associate personal WeChat anymore. It goes directly to the to the to the stores um, to the brands uh, official um, uh, um, WeCom, which is linked with their official uh, bank address. Uh, and then there's also loyalty. So we helped uh, Moschino design the overall loyalty tiers um, after a very uh, thorough audit, um, helping them to ease with their Italian team, global team, China team in terms of you know the data uh, integration, system integration, how the data flows. Uh, since you have, um, uh, you know, a, a quite unique landscape in China and, and the clientele solution is quite different between China and the global. So that's what we did and, and, and essentially um, uh, 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 basically help the China team um, accommodate, uh, number one, the global initiative, but also at the same, same time, uh, ensure uh, a smooth rollout of the different solutions that's based in China. Uh, another case, I guess, is not uh, it's not ITCs in, in ITCs clients, but it's worth uh, I guess uh, mentioning and, and sharing with everybody here. Uh, in terms of WeCom community group, uh, as you can see, uh, Bobby Brown uh, is using WeCom, as I mentioned earlier, as as a official uh, uh, group for the different consumers uh, to foster engagement and community participation. So the different self associate will be able to. Um, uh, uh, you know, send out the different incentives, different coupons uh, via this uh, this this group. And uh, as you can see within the group, they can also share the different mini programs of uh, this brand about different products, uh, thoughts about the product, and and, and also like uh, the different uh, ways of getting the incentives. Because Chinese consumers always some sort of uh, uh, incentives, some sort of deals, right? Some sort of coupons uh, to ensure that. Uh, uh, um, that this is the best they can get. Uh, uh, at the same time, like it's worth mentioning, as you can see, the group managers, uh, oftentimes is the operation specialist, and really invite, uh, you know, leverage this this contact window, you know, invite different customers or members to join live streaming, right? and they can make the purchase within the live streaming, uh, and 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 get the coupon, right? So as a brand, you can manage those uh, those official uh, groups, sometimes in multiple official groups, uh, and maybe even for some brands, like you would have hundred groups that tailored to different product line. Uh, and this is something that uh, we see have, uh, uh, I guess, huge potential for private traffic. And that's what a lot of brands are doing. So I guess that wraps up the overall uh, presentation uh, of today before we jump into a 10 minutes, um, I guess, Q and A session. Um, the key takeaways: Number one, China's digital landscape is is uh, is resolutely digital, uh, with a strong mobile-driven economy. And number two, um, 
social commerce in China is not just an element of, of digital commerce. It is preferred way of transact, of, of, uh, of, of engagement, right? Um, number three is WeChat plays a central role in, in omni-channel retailing. Um, it, it helps brand to build this uh, integration between in-store and digital experience. Again, balance between the online convenience and, and that, that, that in-store experience. And lastly is omni-channel and OTO strategy in China require a, a very unique, uh, um, uh, I guess, multi-factored uh, approach to meet the complex demands of uh, uh, modern consumers, where uh, whether it's a digital ecosystem or the consumer behavior uh, is ever evolving. All right, so that should uh, sum up uh, today's uh, presentation. And now I guess I'll open the floor for a bit of discussion. If there's any questions, feel free to uh, type into the group. Perhaps I can I can answer them. We'll wait for a few minutes. Should there be any? All right, any questions? I'll wait for another three minutes. If there is no questions, then I guess that's uh, actually the end of today's presentation. Let's wait for a little bit more. Okay, Selena, I see Selena has a question here. Let me, okay, yeah, I see this question. So let's start with the first one. In terms of the, the contact information and everything, we will, we will send out after uh, the, today's sharing. Um, Selena, you asked a question of how transferable are these approaches to a Western context? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, for for China, I guess uh, oftentimes people would describe you know China, uh, I guess as the, a, a telescope uh, uh, in terms of you know what what social commerce or uh, um, uh, I guess e-commerce is gonna uh, look like for the Western context. But I guess uh, what we really look at is it's it's some the key takeaway is that China is super digital, so it's you know years ahead when it comes to that online and offline uh, intertwined kind of user journey. And there are definitely some learnings that we can we can take. Um, I guess um, in terms of the transferability, uh, of course, it depends on different you know countries on context. For example, you know Singapore might be a little bit different with Australia. Um, Australia might be a little bit different with other APAC regions where they have their own applications. But I guess the the for brands is really to ensure we meet our customers uh, where they are. Whether you know it's 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 in the you know public traffic we. We meet them there, but it's for you know volume, it's for visibility, and private traffic is where we actually uh, 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 you know provide that tailored experience. And this is going to become more and more, uh, I guess, relevant to the to the West. If you notice that uh, TikTok is trying to you know with the whole e-commerce uh, uh, initiative and also Instagram's attempts on on, on commerce, uh, we can see you know also live streaming. Uh, and those elements, there are definitely some uh, similarities uh, to China, and uh, I guess should be uh, uh, something that we will we'll need to we we'll need to see. I hope that answered a bit of your question. Thank you. All right, any more questions? Okay, I see Xinxing Yan had a question. Do you have any suggestion for smaller foreign brands in developing WeChat clientele management? Is budget an important aspect in WeChat or WeCom management? Um, Yes, I would say um, depending on the budget, of course, there's a lot of things you can do. Developing a mini program would definitely cost more than implementing WeCom uh, or simply uh, open your WeChat official account. Uh, my suggestion for you would be to really look at different touch points with its unique positioning. For example, WeChat and within WeChat ecosystem, uh, WeChat official account would be um, the brand um, hub, right? So through WeChat official account, customer can actually access different information. And WeCom is the client telling tool. 
Um, now with WeCom, because it's also a platform that offers, you know, different approach uh, of client telling. So there are a lot of APIs you can pull from WeCom. There are different ways to leverage WeCom as a solution. Number one is that you can literally just use the native function of WeCom, uh, which is, I would say, you know, comprehensive enough for a lot of smaller brands, uh, including the task management system, the moment posting, the, you know, broadcast messages, uh, as long as you start using WeCom, you know the right approach. Of course, ITC uh, is here to give you the right suggestions. Uh, then there's like the advanced uh, 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 implementation of WeCom, where you actually develop upon WeCom's API uh, to integrate WeCom with other external systems, or such as your CLM system, such as your you know client telling solutions. Um, there is definitely a lot to be to be assessed. But uh, my suggestion uh, related to like client telling or or WeChat is that to really see like what would be the low hanging fruits for you, you know, uh, if it's just implementing WeCom, start moment posting, um, you can actually generate a lot of, uh, you know, profit through just implementing a few simple steps. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, actually a quite complicated question. So uh, uh, if you want, we can get in contact after after the, the presentation and uh, we can schedule uh, a session to, to, to go through that with you, should you have any more questions. Thanks. All right, uh, we have the last question, I guess. Uh, let me see. When first starting the WeChat and WeCom experience, how many resources of sales managers are required to provide dynamics response and guarantee successful client experience? Um, it's kind of experience. So how intensive should their workload be in connection with communicating with clients and potential leads? Thank you very much. That's actually an amazing question. So with WeCom and WeChat, actually they offer, like as, as you can see now, the whether it's you know artificial intelligence or uh, the marketing automation, actually WeCom, within WeCom and WeChat itself, it offers uh, multiple solutions uh, for brands to reduce that manual efforts. Now, of course, depends on the, you know, depending on the volume of your daily inquiries, uh, a management of, you know, sales uh, leads or depending on the, you know, transaction volumes, um, we can, you can set up like a few, uh, I guess, automatic like chatbot. So basically like a QA. and a uh, you have like frequently asked questions or as CTA. So when customer have certain questions or the keywords matches, um, you can send automatic messages uh, directly to the consumers. So you actually don't require everybody uh, to be on WeCom to manage the different uh, uh, different leads. Uh, that's number one, to leverage, you know, the, the, the existing uh, open box functions of WeCom to provide the response um, that is already pre-configured, uh, but also uh, can, can um, lead them to, you know, um, uh, 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 right um, correspondent should they have more questions afterwards, right? So there's a keyword setup you can do with Wecom. Um, but at the same time, if um, you're thinking about, you know, if for some business, uh, not necessarily retail, some business like the, re the uh, the decision cycle will be rather long, and it's important for sales associate to uh, keep, you know, keep uh, communicating with the uh, with the prospects. Then you can actually um, add the different customer in your WeCom as your contact list for each um, sales representative or sales associate, right? Um, and you can manage them uh, through um, um, the sales manager or through the different, you know, task management system to ensure um, this process is streamlined. Um, I guess the suggestion I for you is to to really have an assessment like what what's the current um, like the volume and then you know on WeChat there's also different like you know daily for example ask questions if you're getting only like twenty questions it's going to be very different with you know if if one sales associate is getting like hundred questions on a daily basis so that's number one and number two is to leverage the already uh, set like configured solutions on WeCom such as the the a customer service module of WeChat and WeCom uh, to reduce that manual effort uh, to have the frequently asked questions uh, aligned uh, 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 across different departments and already configured there. So it's going to reduce some time. And lastly, uh, if, you, if you need to, you know, have the team managed uh, to, to set up the, configure the WeCom in the right way, um, of course, we can give you more suggestions afterwards, uh, but essentially it's, it's to ensure that that streamlined and aligned process uh, and, and, and SOP when, when implementing WeCom. All right, that should be it. I think that's the last question. And uh, thank you very much for tuning in today again. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak uh, uh, about uh, this topic and I uh, um, hope uh, we can chat soon someday. All right, thank you. Have a good one. Cheers.